So we got Colossians uh, chapter 3, verses 9 through 11, and we'll start out there. And it's on your paper there, so you don't. I do that, that way you all know what I'm teaching and preaching. I ain't pulling something out of the moves. I, back, I always back everything up with scripture. Um, I think that's what we should do. You're not getting my opinion on anything, you're getting what, what Jesus said. So, if I can find it myself. Colossians 9 3 11. Okay. No, Colossians chapter 3. It's a real small book, it's like toward the end of the Bible there. Uh, but it's on the paper, it's on your last week's paper. It's on, because I didn't remember where to finish up, and we stopped there. And like I said, we're still talking about the old man versus the new creation. And that's what it says here in verse 9. Uh, if somebody wants to read uh, 9, 10, and 11 on that, go ahead and read it. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your Creator. In Christ, there is no Greek and Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen. And we see that. So you see here where we put off those old works, we put off that old man. And if you haven't put off that old man, you're, you're a new born again Christian, you're still working on that. So. And that's why I say you're not going to be perfect when you get saved. I promise you. It's just like a little baby. We got to, we're going to raise up, bring milk, bring the word, show you what's in you, and that's what we're doing. So, um, but the thing is, there is going to be a difference. The thing is, you know, if you get saved three to six, man, there should be a difference. Why? Because Christ is in you. Like I say, you're not going to be you're made perfect in him. When you get born again, you're perfect. You got everything you need, just like a newborn baby does. We just got to bring it out of you and grow it up. So, with that being said, we got to. Some things, like, like when I got born again, some things fell off, and then some things I had to work on. Some old habits you just have to work on and break. But the thing is, don't get yourself in condemnation over it. That's where God's grace comes in. His grace comes in for that new believer. And, and you know, and God, as you grow up in Christ, he's going to expect more out of you as a 10 or 12 or 15-year-old believer. Why? Because you've been growing. You should be, you should be growing up and more mature. You should be doing the things that you were doing you know, nine or ten years ago. And it's the same thing. It's things that you're struggling with now, you're not going to be struggling with six months or a year from now. You shouldn't have the same. You're going to look back and say, you know what, There's a, there was a difference that took place. You're growing in and you're learning the Word. The Word is washing you and cleansing you and watering you. So we got to daily renew our mind and also put off that, that old man and his deeds and walk in the newness that we have in Christ. And that's the thing is we have, before you're born again, you have the spirit of the world. You have the, the fallen man flesh. You have, you have this worldly spirit in you. When Christ comes in, you got the spirit of God. You got the spirit of Christ. So your desire somewhere along the line should change. You shouldn't have that same desire. If you're still, listen, if you've been a Christian for a long time and you're still doing the same, and you're still living according to the flesh, you might need to check up on your salvation. If there's not been a change, you're either one or two things. You're either backslidden or you maybe not even, you maybe not receive Christ. It might just have been a mental thing and just a, a, a you know, confession mentally and not a heart change. So we always need to look at it. He said, you'll know them by the fruits. And the fruits is how we know if they're Christian or not. And we've got to understand, I think it was the Antioch in the Bible was the first time that they called the believers Christians. The Christians did not call themselves Christians. The people out in the world called them Christians. Why? Because they were Christ-like. They were out casting out devils. They was healing the sick. They was winning souls. People were being baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were doing what Jesus was doing, so they called them Christians. Mm -hmm. We call ourselves Christians because we come through the church doors. All right, I'm telling you, it's a difference. There's a lot of people claiming Christ and wearing the name tag. And they, ain't, they ain't none of his. I can promise you, I've seen it. So are you calling yourself a Christian? Are you identifying with Christ? Do you look like, does your life look like his? I'm just telling you, that's why they call them Christians, because they was doing what Jesus done. We need to be doing what Jesus done. This is, this is all Bible. You can look everybody up. This is all Bible. I just, wanted to, I just wanted to make you think a little bit. They were calling them Christians. Why? Because they were doing the things that Jesus wanted. He said, greater works you'll do, because I go to the Father. That's why we have these prayer calls sitting over here. Paul, like we read the scriptures, the aprons come off him. And we're killing people when they touch the skin. So we see that. 
Um, <laughs> we got a helper. <laughs> so we see here, um, again, you have to put on the new man. And it says, let's see, it says, uh, yeah. So I think I might have it says, put on the new man. That means you have to put it on. You have to put it on. There's something on your part that you got to do. And how you do that? Just like what we're doing now, gathering and, and getting in the word and learning. And I always tell everybody, listen, you need to have your personal Bible reading time every day. You need to read the Bible for yourself so you're not deceived. Because I give you all the scriptures I need to put on paper. You can study them. But I can easily deceive you. If you know if you're not reading the Bible, I can deceive you. I can tell you anything you believe in. This, this is what's happening in the world. Our believers have been led astray because they're not reading the Bible. They don't know the word. And so when, when something's preached, it's your duty to search it up and say, you know what? Is this right or not? Is he teaching? That's why, listen, I ain't got nothing high. I give you all the scriptures, everything. Is what he's teaching right? And that's what we need. That's why you need to know the word. I may not always be around, but I can promise you I'm going to give you truth. And I'm going to teach you truth. This is going to be in you. When somebody tries to deceive you or tell you something ain't right, you're going to say, no. Why? Because you know you got the, you got truth in you. You didn't have somebody. You're not going to get my opinion here. You're going to get truth. Amen? So we see that here. So we put off that old. But he says you have to put on the new man. And it's renewed in knowledge. So you put on a new man by knowledge. So you grow by knowledge. You get renewed. You renew the spirit of your mind. And the more you know, the more you'll grow. Right? If we're applying it to our life. According to the image of God, it says. So, uh, the how do you get renewed in knowledge? Uh, the world system has no problem filling you with this knowledge. The world system wants to fill you with this knowledge. The schools, some of the school systems are filling our kids with the worldly system and the worldly ways. And their doctrine, they're, they're like trying to indoctrinate them now. Not all of them, but some of them are. There's an indoctrine going on. They want you, they want you to think that you evolve from... Whatever it is, you know, that, that humans have evolved. Humans are devolving. Look at the immoral, immoral wickedness in our nation. They're actually devolving. So that wouldn't even be true anyways. So there, there's a lot of things going on there. So, so you cannot operate on two systems. And this is what happens in the church. We try to operate on two systems. We try to, we try to operate on and, and go by the world system and the world ways and kind of do what it says. And we try to do God's ways. It doesn't work like that. You cannot operate on two systems. There'll be confusion. You'll be driving down the middle of the road and you'll get hit. We've got to operate on God's system, on his road. Amen? Amen. Amen. <laughs> so, we are unified in the spirit in Christ. So it says here, uh, there, there is no black or white church. We, we talked about that a little bit. Listen, there, it's, there's a church of Jesus Christ. There is no Baptist. There's no Pentecostal. Episcopalian, Catholic Church, none of that. It's one church and it's Jesus Christ. And they're not preaching out of the Bible what the Bible says. Guess what? It ain't a church of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. One church. All that other stuff is a division from the devil. All, all the name denominations and all this stuff, it's a division from the devil. I told you, I'm a biblicist. I believe what the Bible says and we apply it to our life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, I took. When I first came over here, it, it wasn't, because I grew up in the Pentecostal, the full gospel and all that stuff. And I, I, I was around that. And it was a little different, like going to a Baptist denomination. They were like, I said, look, i got to do what God tells me to do. He's calling me that. And I'm glad I did. I'm glad I'm here. Cause, and in the flesh, I wasn't going to come here. And it wasn't, I loved Darren and Desiree and her dad and loved them. But I was like, I just wasn't sure. But God had stirred me for a whole week. And I called up Pastor Darrell and said, I'm coming I said, I don't know why. I said, God's called me there. I said, but I'm, if you can use me now, I'll be there. And that was about a year and a half ago. And uh, sure did. And God is, uh, we've seen God move through it all. But it's, it's a thing following the Spirit. I didn't get caught up in the nomination. I didn't get caught up in that. I said, God wants you somewhere. He's on the inside of you. You just go and release him wherever you're at. I come up in this church and we preach the gospel. We release Jesus. We taught, and Pastor Darrell let me. He, he let, we taught on healing. Deliverance, the whole nine yards. And he, he's like, you know what? It's in the Bible. He's right. Let's learn it. Let's do it. So I knew God had purpose in that. But if I would have got caught up in the denominational stuff, I wouldn't have came. Because I'm telling you, it was frowned upon that I was coming here. But I came anyways. Why? Because I obeyed God. 
and not man. I don't care what people think. Amen. 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 Jesus is up in there. I'm going to be there. Amen. And I'm so glad that I did that I didn't listen to the flesh or listen to the people and I listened to God. Amen. amen. So glad to be here. Got an awesome, the best church family, the best staff that anybody can ever ask for. I, mean, I tell you, I just amen. love it here. You know, wife asked me, love. when I first, the first time I preached here, when Pastor Darrell had me come here when his mom had passed away, I just fell in love with it then. You know, it's like, man, I told my wife, we were sitting right here, I said, look, we didn't have a home church, I'd be here. Just the people and the love, and it just, you just felt like you was at home. I felt like I belonged here. And now we're here. <laughs> now you all are here, amen? So, just amazing. So, be led by the Spirit. Don't worry about what people say. Don't get caught up in denominations and naysayers and all that stuff. If Jesus is being lifted up and his spirit's there, jump on in there. Jump on in the fire. Get washed in the water of the work. Let the power of the Holy Spirit move on you and Amen. speak to you and guide and direct you and develop your own relationship with Christ. Amen. Amen. Because when I'm preaching, there's somebody else is preaching. If you've got the Holy Spirit in you and you're listening and praying with God, he's going to confirm what's being said. Amen. You don't know. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring confirmation. And you'll know you're in the right place. And with that, with Jesus never preached the domination. He preached the kingdom. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And then what did he do? He demonstrated it. Healing, deliverance. He said, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. He cut down and fixed things like they were supposed to be all the way back to the garden. Amen. Yeah, we're still in a fallen sin world, but God has redeemed our bodies. He's redeemed our spirit. He's redeemed our soul. And he's, he's offered healing in all those areas. And as I told you all before, when you get born again, you got a new spirit. When you get delivered from whatever you're battling, he, that's redeeming your soul. And then if you got ailments in your body, physical body, he's healed that by his stripes on the cross. Amen? On the whipping post, by his stripes you're healed. The mental anguish when he's sweating bullets in the garden, when he's sweating those drops of blood, that was for your mental health. I'm telling you, if you're here today and you're battling Day in and day out, your battle with mental illness or, or things like that, that comes from the devil, Amen. from the pits of hell itself, mm -hmm. and you need Jesus. Let me say, let me tell you something. The, you're, if, when Christ is in you and you have his joy and his peace operating on you, there's nothing to be depressed about. This sickness and all this stuff going on in the world, there's nothing to be depressed about. Because, listen, while I'm here, I'm with Christ, and when I die, I'm going to be with him. So it doesn't matter. I'm not afraid to die because I know where I'm going. I don't live in fear. We got to get over that fear of worrying about uh, of dying or anything like that. Because what the world want to do? It wants to put fear in you so it can control you. If it fear will paralyze you, and it'll paralyze your faith. Mm -hmm. And the enemy knows that. Amen. That's how he's controlling the people in America right now because he's put fear in them, and now he can get them to do whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. My God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. In Second Timothy one seven. Amen. He's given me power, love, and a sound mind. I don't Amen. have fear. Fear all along up in this place, I can promise you. Whether I live or die, listen, I'm going to be with Jesus. Amen? We see Romans 6, 4 here. Um, and it says, Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. So we are no, we're no longer denominated, uh, dominated by that sinful nature. We died to that sin. That's what, we partake in the baptism of death. It's dying to self. When you give your life to Jesus, you give your life to Jesus. You say, God, here I am. Use me because I've jacked my life up. I, I am lost without him. I am depressed without him. Amen. I want to seek all the things of the world without him. But now that I have him, I got joy and peace. Amen. I submitted my life to him. His way, his will. That's what believers do. That's why you got people over and overseas that are dying for the gospel of Jesus Christ. China has probably one of the most rapid growing church right now. And they got probably one of the most persecuted churches. They're an underground church growing like and they are on fire. They don't care. They don't mind dying for the gospel. Why? They found truth. Even though they're in bondage in their country, they're free in Jesus. Amen. Listen, you, that's why I tell them at the jail. You might be sitting here in chains. You might be sitting here in bars. But I'm going to tell you, you can Amen. sit in jail and be free and free indeed. Why? Because Amen. your sins are forgiven and they're washed in the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 So we cease to do evil and we learn to do well. 
because we're being discipled. We're going putting away sinful acts of the flesh, but also the inequities of our hearts on the end we're working. So and that's one thing I had to learn too. So not not all sin. Let me say something. There's there's outward acts of sin, sins that we know we do. Your so sins of commitment that you're committing, but you got the inward sins of the heart, envy, jealousy, bitterness, wrath, all that stuff. That's inward sin. That has to be dealt with. Jesus came and dealt with the heart. If he can get the heart right, he can get the outside right. Amen. Amen. If he can get the heart right, he can get the outside right. And that's what he does. I remember when I got born again, he just had that hard heart of stone. It was a heart of stone. And he come in there and it's like he just crashed it. And just it melted. And it changed my whole life. I didn't even, I, I looked at things different and seen things different. You know, he just had that love and compassion. For people that I had never had. Why? Because Christ was in me. He had crashed into the, 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 the Bible says a heart made of stone. And he gave me a heart of flesh. And I told my wife and I missed, you know, I, I never knew love until I got born again. And then I realized I had such a com compassion and a passion for my family and the love. Like, I, I, before I would take my kids for granted, when I got born again, I started seeing all this stuff. It was like I was a brand new person. And I, the things that I used to take for granted, I don't take for granted anymore. Because that old heart of stone is gone. And I didn't, I, and, and it took my wife and my marriage, our love, to a different level. You know, because I really thought I knew love and I didn't until I knew Christ. That's why it's so important that he's in the center of your marriage. You put him in the focal point of your marriage, if you've got a relationship with him and your, your spouse has got a relationship with him, it changes your life. Mm -hmm. Because you have that love and that forgiveness and that compassion. You know, even when you're wrong, you just submit and say, you know what, it's not even worth it. It his love, the love of Jesus Christ will change your life. It'll change your family. They'll see it. There, there's a difference. I'm telling you. There's a difference. And see, our bodies, when we were, our first birth, we we'll always say our first, first birth jacked us up. That's why we've got to be born again. Uh, our bodies used to be instruments for the devil. Now we should be instruments for Christ. When I was out reveling, partying, running, living for me, 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 and all about me, 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 there was, I was living for the devil. I was doing his deeds, his will, pulling people into that stuff. But now, when we get born again, we become instruments for Christ. That's why I say, you're, you're, you're being used by one or two people to the God or the devil. And I served the devil for a lot of years. I lived for him a lot of years, and I said, no more. And I'm, he's not going to get my best years. My best years are going to be now. Yeah. And I'm going to burn, listen, I, I burn the candle on both ends for the devil. I burn the candle on both ends for Jesus. Amen. Amen. Nonstop. Amen. Listen, we're going to burn, we're going to run this race. I'll be in a full sprint when he calls me home. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. That's all of us. Listen, why should the devil have our best years? He ain't going to. We're going to learn what's in us. We're going to walk in power. We're going to walk in authority, and we're going to put the devil on notice every time our feet hit the floor. Every time he's going to know, man, they're up again. My kingdom's in trouble. That's how he should look at us. Because we're a threat. We're pulling people out of fire. We're pulling them out of hell. We're getting them out of that bondage. We're getting them out of that addiction. Why? Because we're praying for them. And we're loving on them like we're supposed to be doing. Amen. Amen. So now... You're a son, and some of us, you know, you're a baby in Christ, you've been born in the Spirit, and now you're learning to do the spiritual things of God. You're learning how to win souls, pray for the sick people, and stuff like that. And the first thing is, like the baptism of death, it's dying to self. Getting over the, the fear of self and the fear of people. That's hard to do. I told y'all, I tell you all the time, so the first time I prayed for somebody, it was like a, a one second prayer. It's like be healed and run and make sure nobody's looking and because that's just, you know, I'm all right. Can I pray for you? So I said, be healed in Jesus' name. I'm out of here, you know. What nobody what makes you But that's how it now it's like I don't care. I pray for people in poor houses, middle program, it doesn't matter, you know, because I've seen God move in it. You know, because why? Because I died to self. Until you die to self, you'll never be living for Christ. If it's all about you all the time, then it's all about you. It ain't about God. And I'm just being truthful. That's what he's talking about, the baptism of death, you know. We've got to get over ourselves. If people offend you, you're not dead yet. We need to be like that dead person in the casket. Look, when you walk up to a dead person, you start speaking to him, you can make fun of him, you can say whatever, but what is he going to do? Nothing. That should be us. That should be us. Because if you're getting offended about what people are saying, then you're not dead yet. 
It shouldn't even bother you. Even, even preaching the gospel. I got people come against things that I preach. And uh, I, listen, I give all the scripture right here. They don't believe in the power of God. I've heard people say, what uh, healing was just for the apostles. The power, no, the power is for the church. That's what keeps the church going year after Amen. year after year that he returns. It's the power of the gospel. Amen? It's that dem the, 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 the kingdom. Jesus preached the kingdom, and it came with a power and a demonstration. There was a demonstration of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we'll get into that a little bit more. And that was the kingdom. The Spirit of God, he always confirmed his people. He said, uh, there were one time the disciples, they prayed, they said, Lord, let, your, let, let, your, let our preaching be with the following of a demonstration of the power and spirit. His kingdom is, that's, that's, what, that's the only book out in the world where it actually comes with a demonstration of power. The, the writer, the Holy Spirit of this book shows up and shows out after you preach the gospel or while you're preaching to them. He's speaking to people. So it was, it's a, it, Jesus preached the kingdom. He preached the kingdom. <clears throat> now we are empowered, empowered by the Holy Spirit, which gives us the ability to overcome the flesh. We overcome the flesh and the works of the flesh and sin. It, the power of that gets broken over you when you get born again. So we overcome those things. Uh, it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us power over sin. We can overcome it and conquer it. Amen? Um, and like I said earlier, there's, there's changes that, that have to take place. Some things fall off and some things just happen. Um, and some things may take some time on our part. You know, practicing... Uh, you, like I said, you might be something you're battling, you want to do away with. It just you got to keep battling it. Don't give up. Whatever that uh, it may not even be a sin. It just might be something you want to. You know, like me, I like cookies and sugar and all the sweet <laughs> stuff and food. So you know, you have to. There has to be a balance in it. So the, the power, the power of Jesus Christ will give you the power to overcome those things that, that you no longer want in your life. But you sometimes you have to be patient. You got to believe. You got to pray. Uh, and things like. Uh, like profanity and anger and stuff like that. And that's stuff I've dealt with. You know, when you first get born again. Don't beat up yourself. If you, you know, you slip on a customer here and there. Or anger. You know, and the thing is, anger is not a bad thing. It's anger. It's how you use it. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. Jesus was pretty angry when he went up in the temple and drove the money changers out. He made a whip of cords. He drove the money changers out. Um, flipped over tables. Let a pastor do that in church now, see what everybody does. <laughs> Jesus did not play. When it came to his people, you mess with his people, or you mess with God's house. He come with blue. It was a righteous anger. He had a right to be angry. But sometimes we get angry and we do stuff, we don't have a right to be angry. That's when you sin. Amen. So anger, anger is not a but some people have it, you gotta you gotta get in under control. And that sometimes that takes time. It took me time. It takes time, it takes practice. And it's you gotta allow the Holy Spirit to show you. When you begin that color, he just, he just quickens you. The Holy Spirit will quicken you. Like, hey, chill out. It's going to be okay. And he just starts to speak to you. That's what you, and you got to, and, and over time, you'll, you'll be able to adapt and overcome whatever you're battling, whether it be anger, profanity, and all that stuff. Because it, you know, they're just habits. When you've been doing something for 30, 40 years, it's hard to just break. It's hard to just break. Some people, sometimes it does just fall off. But it's hard to break. So, and what I would say, don't beat yourself up and don't get you in condemnation over it. Don't get condemned over it. Just get a hold of it, recognize it, and ask God to help you with it. Amen. Our name clear. <clears throat> we see Romans um, 7 6 says this. But now we have been delivered from the law. So we've been delivered from the law. We come the law of sin and death. Before Jesus Christ, we were under the law of sin and death. And we um, and the law of the you know the law of the Bible too the, the Old Testament laws having died to what we were held by so that we should serve in the newness of the Spirit and not the oldness of the letter so we serve in the Spirit and not the oldness of the letter sin and death used to have power over us before we got born again now it has listen the grave can't hold us anymore sin can't hold us anymore why because when i mess up i go to jesus and say god i've messed up can you forgive me and wash me in your blood cleanse me and make me new i messed up i fell a little bit short today god amen will you touch me and cleanse me amen, amen. that's what we have so there's no condemnation in christ jesus walk in the spirit and i tell you the more you do it the easier it gets the easier it gets the easier all those old things used to battle 
you don't battle anymore. You ask Darren, I mean, you, there's probably so much you used to battle when you really got into church and, and really came alive. I'm just using for example, but a lot of those things you don't battle, they just fall off. Some things you still struggle with, you know. So it takes time. It takes time. Um, so we see that we're born in, we're delivered from the law, we're no longer under the law of sin and death, and it's lost its power over us. So Galatians 3.24 says this. It says, it's probably not on there, but it's Galatians 3.24. It says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. So the law was showing us that what? We're sinners. We can't listen. None of us can keep the law. There's no way. All the, I don't know how many commanders, 650 or something? 630? I think it's 630, 640. Old Testament law. We can't keep them. Jesus said, I feel it. What he did was the two greatest commandments. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and body, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you do those two things, you'll fulfill the Ten Commandments, right? I mean, the Ten Commandments are good. We should be going by them. But if you'll just do the two, it fulfills the ten. Because if you love God, you love your neighbor, you're not going to commit those, you're not going to commit any of the, you know, break the Ten Commandments. So he made it really, really easy for us. And like I told you before, now you can, you can walk in some freedom. As long as you go every day and you're just loving people and you're blessing people and you're being nice to people, guess what? You're in the Spirit. You're not under the law. Amen? Amen. And we, our word, it, says, it says here that we're justified by faith. And I've got um, Romans 8 1 too. That, that might not be on there. Uh, this is uh, what I have on there. Romans 8 1. Make sure that right here. Yeah, Romans 8 1, I believe. But showing 8 there. So it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. So the only way you're. Basically, the only way you're going to get condemnation is if you're walking according to the flesh, walking according to the old man. You're going to get condemnation. It says there's condemnation, but it, but he says there there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Remember, you've been baptized into the body of Christ now, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. How do we walk after the Spirit? Do what the Bible says. It's a spirit book. Mm -hmm. We do what it says, it works. Amen. Amen. That's walking in the spirit. Doing, uh, well, I don't know how I don't know what the Bible says. We'll learn what it says and start to apply it and walk in spirit. It's real easy. We're spirit. We have been, uh, that new birth is a spiritual birth that we take on, which gives life to our body. Because of Jesus in us, we have life and we have life. We have life and we have life with Jesus on the inside of us. First uh, John 417 says this love has been perfected among us in this that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is as Jesus is so are we in this world that's what the Bible says these ain't my words these are God's words I'm going to read it again that's why I put these scriptures here this is who we are in Christ John, 1 John 4, 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Why? Because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we now. Not, not when we get to heaven. Not 20 years from now. Right now, as he is, so are we in this world. Amen. We get that? Christ in us, the hope of glory. 1 John 4.18 says this. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Why are Christians running around in fear? Amen. Why are Christians, well, we got 50% of Christians sitting out of church right now. Because they don't know Jesus. It says perfect love casts out fear. You're perfect love of Christ. You're not going to have fear. If you know who Jesus is, and he lives in you, you're not going to have fear. You're going to trust him and rely on him. We run around, and we run around in fear. I'm just telling you. I, I'm not speaking, like, not really here, but I'm talking about in the church world. They are running around in fear. They are setting up their churches to give jabs to people. Nonsense. 
They ain't got no biblical basis on backing that up. No biblical basis to back unless you got sick people, you lay hands on them and they'll recover. Yeah, if you don't kill them, Chad. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hirelings, worldly pastors. If you've got your church set up to get vaccines, you need to turn it. You need, listen, you need to turn it all in and go sell cars, go sell shoes, mm -hmm. or whatever you need to do. If you've got your church open up as a jab center, you've missed it. You've missed it. I'm telling y'all. We got, we got to fit. Now is the time that we figure out what side we're going to be on. We're going to be on the side of the world or we're going to be on the side of the word, what Jesus says. Now is the time. Amen. Now is the time. We got too many cowardly Christians running around. Too many cowardly Christians running around in fear, claiming to be Christians. Like I said, they're putting the name tag on herself. You'll be called a Christian by people when you're doing his works. Y'all getting quiet on me now. <laughs> I love y'all. That's why I come here and preach truth to you. But he says, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear involves torment. You're tormented if you're in fear. You got people sitting up in their closets. They're sitting up in their houses. They won't leave their homes. Why? Because they're in fear. I'm going to tell you, if you're a Christian, you don't need to be up in fear in your home. Why? Even if you, listen, even if you do die of sickness, guess what? You're going to be with the king. Amen. You're going to be with the king. Listen, yes, whether it be amen. now or 10 or 20 years from now, you will be sitting at the feet of Jesus when you die. Why are we living in fear? There, listen, ain't nothing, listen, I do want to see my kids get raised, but listen, God takes, listen, if the devil's that strong where you take me out, to God be the glory. I, I want to be with Jesus. Listen, it's a whole lot better than here. Amen. And I'll trust God that my kids will make it too. Amen. Amen. I'm telling y'all. Listen. Fear has torment. Amen. Don't live in it. We cast it out of here. We cast that spirit out of here. It don't live here anymore. <clears throat> but it says here, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We want to be made perfect in love. Amen. How we do that? We got to know Jesus. Know the love he has for us. Know the things that he offers to us as believers. Listen, something comes up on you and you pray. I don't know how many times I've had things try to tighten my body. I just start speaking against it. Devil, you gotta listen. If symptoms come on, don't receive it. Cast them out. You ain't touching my body. Why? Because I'm in the body of Christ. I'm mm his. -hmm. I'm not your sickness. <laughs> Cancer, you're not my body. I'm not, I'm not your body. I'm, I'm in Christ. I'm in him. It has no part of me. Amen. That's how you gotta speak. That's how you gotta war. Amen. We've got to learn to war against these things in the spirit. The Bible says you're not of your own anymore. You're of Christ. Amen. So we see that. This is why we can have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we. It does not say, so shall we become. Remember I was talking earlier. As he is, so shall we become. No, it's as he is, so are we. When you get born again, like I said, and then sometimes I know I repeat myself a little bit, but I have to drive this home. I do that for a reason, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the word. If you hear it long enough, you're going to start believing it. Amen. Amen. You will start believing it. It's called renewing the spirit of your mind. That's why I'm going to keep repeating. I'm going to keep driving it, because you're going to know who you are when you walk up out of here. Amen. You're going to know who you are. John 8, 12 says this. Let me back on up. I got one more thing to say. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> when you were born again, you were made complete in him. You were formed in the spirit to be, look, and act like Jesus in the spirit. As a born again Christian. As a born again Christian. That's why I give you all this paperwork here. And I give you what I'm teaching. Because you might get, you know, when you get a, get a hold of this and you go home and study it, get it in, get this word in you. It's so important to meditate on this. Get know who you are. Know that He's in you, and you just keep driving it home, driving. Then when you get it, you'll have the paperwork. You'll have the scriptures that you need, all out laid out, where you can go help other people. You might have it in your neighborhood. You might get a little Bible study together. And guess what? This this is where you start. Right here, you show them what's in them, and once they know that, the rest of it falls right in place. Right? That's Amen. that's why I do this. That's why I do this. We'll close there just a minute. John 8 12 says this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen. Thank you, buddy. So Jesus gives light. So if you don't have Jesus, what? You're walking in darkness. He said, he is the light of the world. He is the light. And I should let y'all been reading. I've been reading. I'm sorry. Using colors and reading. I've been going on. Appreciate it. That's why I want y'all to do be involved in reading. So. But he says, uh, he's the light of the world. So he who follows him. So if you continually follow in Jesus, you'll have the light of life. But if you're continually following the world, you'll, you'll be following the world in darkness. The world, listen, the world's going one way. And the church is going the other, two different directions. That's why we don't. That's why we don't get along. The things that's going on in the world. That's why we don't like it. When they're murdering people and all the crime and the violence and all the the, the all the deception, and everything. That's why we don't like it. Why? Because it's the system. That's what they do. We we war against those things. Amen. Amen. Now now we'll be on our. Let's go to John uh, fourteen ten. And we'll do, uh, somebody read 10 and 11, and we'll just finish on that. We'll finish on that. That should be probably your new paper. That should be, uh, that'd be part four, the one I, the new one for today. I think, is, am I right? That's what it picks up. Yeah. So if somebody wants to read that, we'll, we'll finish up with that scripture. Do you not believe that I am the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Go ahead and read 11. Okay, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works of themselves. <clears throat> so we see that. What we see here, so we see Father and Son, two separate persons of the Godhead. Because the, there's other doctrines out there that Jesus only and this and that. There's three. We've got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So we see here... That distinct separation right here in the scripture. I just want to I just want to bring that out. Uh, we see here where the Father has given up, has given Jesus authority. He says, I don't what I, he said, the words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority. So he's speaking the words of the Father. When we preach the gospel, we preach God's word, we're speaking under his authority. Right? Jesus said, We're 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 in, you know, the things that he done will do in greater. And when we speak on behalf of God, when we speak his word, we're speaking under the authority of the Father. Um, but he says, <clears throat> the Father who dwells in me does the works. Jesus never took credit for the works. He always glorified the Father. Why are people taking credit for the works of God? Amen. You have ministers that will take credit. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Instead of lifting up Jesus. Jesus didn't even... He didn't even take credit for the works. He always turned the glory back to the Father. He set the example for us. We should always give glory to God when he's done great things. Amen? Amen. So we see that. <clears throat> so Jesus takes no glory or credit when the works of the Father are done. So, and then he goes on to say, if you don't believe me by what I'm saying, believe in me because of the works the Father is doing in me. He said, if you don't believe me by my words, believe me by the works. That's what Jesus is saying. So he always gives that demonstration. The demonstration of the power, the miracles that follow the preaching and all those things that happen, they're a demonstration of the power, and they confirm the word of God. Amen? That's what we want to do. We want to be Christ-like. We want to do the things he's done because he's given us that authority. Let's don't, let's don't waste it. And I got one example. I hope I get this right. I didn't watch it, but y'all remember the Beverly Hillbillies? Everybody say the Beverly Hillbillies. Make sure I'm right. Wasn't they sitting on oil when they struck it rich? Mm -hmm. Think about it. How long were they sitting on that oil before they struck it rich? Before they found 
that treasure that was under the, under the ground that they owned. How long is the Christian world sit and sit around and have this treasure that's in earthen vessels? We sit around with the power and the authority and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I'll be with you and I'll be in you and I'll be working through you. Do we believe it? That's the Holy Spirit. When he won't work, Doing the things that Jesus had to lay, it's the Holy Spirit that's doing the work. Amen. He is our helper. He is our comforter. We'll get into all that things that he does. He is that person that walks with us. He is the Spirit of God. He is the Spirit that lives in us. That we are that tre we have a treasure in an earthen vessels. We are now the temple of God. Amen. Listen, there's nothing holy about these bricks and mortar walls and drywall. The only thing holy about it is you and I sitting on here because we got Jesus on the inside of us. Amen? Amen. That's the only thing holy up in this building. Right there with paint, mortar, brick, and walls and to follow the ground. Mm -hmm. That's why we can go out into the world and we can go out in the neighborhoods, we can preach the gospel, and people get saved, they get healed, they get touched, and their lives get transformed. Why? Because it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. The hope of glory. Give God some praise. You can turn on. You too, we think you're too, then. We love you.